Hey folks, my name is Max Katz, welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a reporting capability to an existing enterprise app. And I'll be using Octa Workflows to do that. And Octa Workflows is a no-code identity automation platform. You're looking at a blog post that has all the steps, all the details on how to build this automation, how to get the application, how to launch it, and then again, step-by-step -step how to build the automation in Octa Workflow. So I'll be referring to this as I build the automation in this video. So let me show you how the enterprise application looks. Now, let me, I'm just gonna refresh and I'm gonna sign in. Now, you'll see this is a straightforward to-do app. You know, that's the enterprise app uh, and we like it, it works well. You can add new items, you can mark them completed and then you can also delete items. But it's missing one capability and that's a reporting. I would like to get an email, uh, maybe even daily or weekly or as however often you want, uh, with a report of all the tasks that have been completed and then what still needs to be done, right? Again, I can send the email to me, to my manager or to, to anyone else. So that's what we are going to do. Let me go back here. Let me go to the table of content here. In this blog post, uh, the application does need a new API endpoint, which is enhancing the to-do application with a new API. So when you download the application, you need to add the API endpoint and the API endpoint returns all the to-do items for a particular organization. So there is a security built in, so not you, know, you don't want anyone to be able to call the API. You'll see, so the steps are, the you know, the steps are here. Now I'm gonna skip on this part uh, just to save time and to focus more on the uh, Octa workflow side. But again, the steps are right here. I've got the application running um, uh, locally. And also I have this uh, tunnel, uh, local tunnel that I'm running. Now I go back and so there's the steps are here as well on how to set up and launch the title. Now, why do you need this? Um, so Octa Workflows is running in the cloud. And now the application from this workshop um, is running locally on my computer. And so for Octa Workflows to access the API, um, it needs the local tunnel. Now this is only for demonstration purposes, just to make it straightforward for you to actually complete this, up, this workshop. So you don't need to deploy the application somewhere in the cloud. Of course, in the real world, the application will be running somewhere in the cloud and you don't need this local tunnel, right? So that's kind of it. That's the story. Let's go to Octa Workloads. Uh, and also before I go to Octa Workloads, if you have access to Octa Workloads, great, you can use that access. If you don't have access, no worries. There is a section right here, getting access to Octa Workloads that you can uh, get a trial and then to Octa Workloads and then complete this, this workshop. So again, if you don't have access, no worries sign up for trial and you'll be able to finish this tutorial. So let's get started. Now I'm in Octa Workflows, I'm in the Flows tab. Now on the left hand side, I've got some folders. If this is your first time looking at Octa Workflows, then you're only gonna have the default folder and that's totally fine. Uh, to start, I'm going to create a new flow and I'm gonna create a new, click this button and I'm gonna give this a name. So to do report. And it's usually a good idea to give a description. So list all the to do all flow. I'm going to also turn this option and this saves data between different flow runs. And this is very handy when we are testing the flow. I'm going to come back. You're going to see how this capability works in just a few minutes. I'm going to click save. All right. I've got a, a new flow and I've saved the flow with a, I gave the flow a name. So usually the first thing to consider is how do you trigger a flow? And you can see it says here when this happens and then add an event. So there are two main, main ways. I mean, there are other ways, but the two main ones. So the first one is a schedule. And as I mentioned, we want to send an email on daily or weekly. And so that's what we're going to do here. So to, to, um, to run this flow on schedule, I'm going to click add event. And then I'm going to click schedule. And then right away, it's asking me, so how often do you want to run this? Now I can run it as often as every five minutes, but I want to do this right now. So I'm going to switch to weekly and I'm going to say that I want to run this, let's say every Friday at 9 a.m. And I'm going to click save. If you ever need to go back, you can click this little clock icon 
in reconfigure. All right. Now, the other option to trigger a flow is based on an event. So if you, an event happens in your organization, so for example, when let's say a user is activated, you can trigger a flow, or a user is deactivated, or their password is changed, or a new application was assigned to a user. So all these events, and there's a long list of events, you can trigger a flow based on those events. Now, a third option, we're also gonna use it here, is a helper flow, right? Is that when one flow calls another flow. Uh, there are other ways, but that's not important for this workshop. So we're done, so well, we sort of took care of, you know, how do we trigger the flow? So the next step is we wanna get all the items from uh, from the enterprise application. And as I said, uh, there are steps to add an API endpoint. I've already done that. Um, but now I want to load those API endpoints. Or sorry, not load API endpoints, but load those to-do items. Um, and so for that, I'm gonna use a function. Let me open this menu, this option here. And you can see there are a lot of different categories, uh, like branching, uh, error handling, like flow control. And I can actually click here like a, this done, uh, this does, um, this for example, call flow will call another flow. There is branching like if else, um, you can work with text, you know, numbers, you know, true, false, date and time, objects, files, you know, lists. But the one we want is the API connector um, step or a card. And we want to use the get one. Now this allows me to call to call a third-party API, which we're going to do in our case. Now, before I do that, let me go back and show you what the action is. Now, a function, again, allows you to manipulate data. An action, on the other hand, is a connection to an existing service. So these are out-of-the-box uh, connectors for which you can create connections, right? And then every connector supports different actions that you can call. And we're gonna use the Gmail one um, in just uh, at a later step. All right, well, let's go back to function and we're gonna go to connector and then I'm gonna use the get card or a step. And then, so this is called a card and then the card will have inputs at the top here and then outputs at the bottom here. And for inputs, it says the URL query and headers. So uh, for the URL, we need to go to our tunnel. Let me do this, so copy. All right, uh, this is the host. Now for the actual endpoint, I'm gonna to refer to the blog post and I'm gonna go, let's see here, launching in local funnel. So I'm gonna jump on this section. And again, there are steps so I have to do that. And so right here, let me do this. Copy here. All right, cool. Now, once you uh, set the URL, uh, you can test the card. Now, every card you can test. And if I look at the bottom here, there is a test this card but, um, icon or button. I'm going to click it. And I'm going to say test. But now what's going to happen, actually, I'm getting an error, right? Not authorized, which makes sense. I mentioned that this is a secure API, uh, but I haven't provided any sort of authentication information. Because, of course, if, if someone had this URL, then anyone would be able to call it if there was no uh, API key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, a connection. And I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to set a new connection. And now the connection is a custom. And I'm going to specify a header name and a value. And for that, I'm going to go back to my blog post. And right here, I'm going to copy. And so this is the header value. All right. All right. This is the name is fine. Or we can do um, to do connector. Give it a name. Click create. And we can see the connector is set right here. And if I test this again, now we actually get back the to-do items, all right? So we've got the to-do, four to-do items here, and they are the same as, as here. So the API endpoint working, and we're able to get all the uh, to-do items, um, all right? And then now the next step is we want to take the, the 
the to-do items and send them in an email. All right, so we're going to do this in two steps. Uh, the first step, we're not going to really format it. We're just going to send it kind of a, in this raw JSON format. And then in the next step, we're going to format it. So, but this body here, this is the response. Now, really quickly, if you, there's some other uh, outputs here. If you ever need to, like you decide, I don't want to see them here, then there is a little gear and then you can say, choose fields. And then you can decide which fields you want to show or not. So for example, we only need the URL so we can uncheck query and headers. And then, right? And then it just becomes more compact this way. All right. But the next step is we want to have a, a card that will uh, create text for us. And I'm going to add function. And then in the text category, I'm going to select compose, which writes to sort of write any text. Okay. And I'm going to say to do items. And now I'm going to take this body here. And notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop it. So this is my favorite capability in Active Workflow. This is how you pass data or from card to card or connect data. Let me show you one more time. I take this and, all right. But now that I've got two cards, um, you can of course test this card, but you know then you need to enter some sample data here. So just we'll just say hello and. This is the output. Um, but now, how do you test this entire flow now, right? So there is a run button and it will test the entire flow. So you can test individual cards, but you can also test uh, the entire flow. So I'm gonna click run and it's gonna switch to this different view and it's gonna run. And now we can see this is the result, right? The to-do items label and then the text, the JSON from the uh, API endpoint. And if I run this again, right, um, and again, you can see how data is passed from card to card. And so this is this is the first run, and this is the second run. And so if you remember this option here, right, so this option will save each run, so I can see what data was used in a particular run, right? So this is what this option is for. Now, so the last step is we need to send an, send this via email. And for that, I'm going to use an action because we're going to be using a Gmail action. So I'm going to use action. And so these are already connected apps. Uh, but for Gmail, it's not connected. And then every connector will show you the action that it supports. Now, behind the scenes, these are API calls. But you don't need to worry about setting up the API call. And I'm going to use send email. And it's telling me, well, you need to create a connection because no connection exists to Gmail. So I'm going to click new connection. And the name is fine. I'm going to click create. And I'm going to use this account. And I'm going to say allow. And it creates a connection to Gmail. Right? We can see that you know this card has, these are the inputs. Um, and then this is the output. Right now for the for the email, so I'm going to use this test email service. I'm going to so paste the email. Now for this object, I'm going to call this to do report. And now for the body, I'm going to take this and map it like this. All right. And again, if I don't want to see this from CC and BCC, I can click with gear, choose fields, and just uncheck the stuff that I want. Looks good. Now, if you wanted to test this card, you can. You can. So clicking and we can just enter test email for the body and click test. Let's close and let's go to this email service. Uh, usually refreshes, but we can also click refresh. All right. And we see this is the email that we just received. All right. All right. Uh, we can delete it. All right. Let's uh, test the, the entire flow. So we're going to click Run. And this is the third run. And we can see that uh, this is the, the body, right? So this is the first step, uh, second step, third step. Let's go to the email. And I think this is the one. Yeah, right? So we just received, this is the JSON response. And then this is the, uh, the label. All right, we just built an automation 
Uh, it will run again every Friday. Uh, it's actually right here. It's showing you um, right here at the time. It's showing you when it's going to run next. We are getting the uh, to-do items from an external um, endpoint. We are just really doing some basic formatting here. And then we're using the Gmail send email card to send the email. And we were able to also test the flow. Now, of course, one thing we need to do is we need to format this, uh, this body a little bit uh, better because it doesn't look very user-friendly when we send the JSON, right? So we're going to do that next. And for that, we're going to use a helper flow. So I'm going to exit back to this folder, to the folder, and I'm going to create a new flow. And I'm going to call this um, to do report helper. And then I'm going to call this format to do items flow. And as before, I'm going to enable this option. Okay. Now for the helper flow, for a flow to become a helper, a helper flow, we use a card called uh, helper flow card. Right. And now we need to define inputs for the helper flow. So the first one is, let's see what I called it here, just to just to match oh, item, right? So we're going to create this input into the helper flow. So let's call this item. Now this is going to be an object. And then right here, every field, if you click the little A, uh, we can again make this an object. And then it has two items, task, uh, it's a string, and then completed, which is also a string, right? Now, one more field we need is called memo or, or memo, um, but um, I'm going to cover this in just a second, all right? And again, this is just, sorry, going back to the tutorial. Uh, this is the structure is defined uh, right here. All right. I'm going to be using what's called a reduce card. And then what it does is that it takes a list of value and values and reduces it to a single value, right? That's what we need. So we have a, a list of items and we want to build a message out of those items. So if we have four, we want to reduce it to just a single text value that we can send in an email. Okay. So for that, I'm going to click function here and I'm going to use the compose and I'm going to take the, put it right here. And again, I'm going to explain this and then add a little arrow and I'm going to put it the task and then I'm going to and open a parenthesis and put the completed value. Right. So this is going to build the message for me. It's going to take the first item, then append the second item and the third item. And again, I'll, I'll explain how this works. But the last step is we need to return the value back to the main flow. And I'm going to search. So there are these categories, um, but I usually just search. So we can do return. And like this. All right. So this is our helper flow. And let's save, and we'll come back to it again in just a sec. I'm going to go back to the folder and open the main flow. Okay, so now we need to call a special reduce card that will call the helper flow. And then we're going to pass the list of items to it. I'm going to click, uh, select this plus here. Now notice that um, you can add steps in between cards as well. I'm going to use the, um, the yellow is a function. And then this is an action. Um, and I'm going to search for reduce. Right. It says convert to list to a single object. And so th that's what we need. Okay. And then this is how it looks. Okay. Now there are a few things I need to do before we can connect data. So the first thing, if you remember, if I go back to that what I need is I need this array, like this to-do array. That's what I actually need to pass uh, to the reduce card. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define, if I go back, I'm going to say to-dos, and I'm going to make this to be an object, and it's going to be a list. Okay. So what it allows me to do is, to take, take, I'm going to take the to do field and map it to the list. Okay. So again, taking the to do and mapping it to the list. All right. Next, um, I need to select 
a helper flow. Uh, what I can also do is let me just delete this uh, text so it's not in the way. So I'm going to click this and delete it. Okay. I'm going to choose helper flow. And this is the helper flow that I created. Okay. And now, once I select the helper flow, it actually creates the input fields here. Okay. So once you select, it reads the helper flow information and then it tells you, sort of prompts you to provide values uh, for the helper flow. Now, the first one is this memo or memo. And I'm going to first make it a text. So this is the initial value. I'm going to call this to do items. And now here, this is the value from the list. So I'm passing each item at a time. First item, second item, and this is the initial value. One last thing I need to do, because we're going to be getting back a text, I'm going to change this to text as well. Okay. And then I'm going to take this item, and this is our new message. Okay. If you also want to, if you wanted to give it more uh, context, um, and you would prefer this to be called something else, you can click the arrow, click customize, and email message. And then it changes here as well. Let's run this, and I'm going to open the helper flow. So you can open it by this uh, icon here. It will open the helper flow. Okay. Now you, we need to turn on the flow. And so for that, you can also you can go here, flow is off, I'm going to turn it on. And notice the save data is option available here as well. If you need to turn it on, we're going to keep it on. All right, so this is the helper flow. And now this is the, uh, the main flow. And let's give this a run. So I'm going to click run. Let's see, it kind of moves step by step. Now we can see right here that this is the this is the message that was sent, right? And these are the, the four items. Um, let's go to our email service. And that's what we get. Uh, and this is now the updated format, right? So we can see the task name and then in parentheses, it says whether it was completed or not, okay? Now, the main flow runs once. But then the helper flow, we should have four executions, one for each item, all right? So as I said, this is very, very handy. So let me show you, let's, uh, let's see how this works here. Uh, so again, we're passing to the reduce cart, we're, we're passing all the items, uh, the list, and then it will process them one at a time. So like a for each type loop. But look at the first one, uh, the first run is that looking right here, we're, um, the item, this is the first item that's being passed. Try a workload tutorial. And then the memo value is to do items. That's the initial value. Now, what we're doing later, we're sort of combining them two. And then the result is to do items and then the first item. And then we're returning it back to the main flow. Right? So we took the initial value appended the first item, and then returning it back to the main flow. Now let's look at the second run. Now notice that this is the second item from the list, but notice that the memo value is has what we returned from the previous run. It has the original and then plus the item. And now we're appending another item the second one, and we're returning it back. Now the third run, notice that now we have the two items, that's from the previous, right? And we're adding the third item and returning it. And now on the final run, we're passing in the three items, sort of the label plus three items, and we're adding one last item and returning it. And now we processed all four, and that's when the reduce card uh, is done running. And we now uh, step to the next card, which is the send email, and we send the email. Okay, we can run this again one more time. All right, and if I go to the helper flow, we should have 
we should see sometimes we need to go back like this we see four more runs so one two three four right? and if i go to my email service uh, we have this report all right that's what i wanted to show you um one little thing we can try is if i click let's say we completed this one and let's do one more run Right? And you can see already here that this is false, this is false, but then this is true, and this is true. And let's see. So now we have true that are completed and two that are not completed yet. Now, as for the schedule, again, it's going to run you know, on, on Friday. So that's why it's showing the time it's going to run next. But that's what I wanted to show you. So again, we started with the enterprise application. We enhanced the application with a with secure API endpoint that returns all the to-do items. And then we built an automation that runs on schedule and sends uh, a report about the to-do items uh, once a week, right? So we get the to-do items. We first just sent the raw message, which was fine. Uh, but then we uh, added helper flow to format uh, the email message using this reduce card. Um, we format the message and then we send uh, send the email. So that's what we wanted to build and that's what we have. And again, this blog post has all the details, uh, everything you need step by step. If you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to, to reach out to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in a work close way and I'm going to put my email right here. If you need to reach out to me, with uh, any questions. So that's my email. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.